Hi dear, I am Dr. Praveen Kaur Gupta, and this videos are a series only made for you. Learning histopathology is never easy, and you have always been so worried about it, but no further here on. So in this series that I am starting, I am looking for the understanding of the histology first, and based on the normal histology, I will talk about histopathology, and not only that, we will also have the entire features clinically and how to diagnose them. Well, guys, if you are ready with it. Ensure that you watch the video completely, and before you go to it, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Let's start it discussing and learning the view era of histopathology. In this video, we'll talk about yet another an organ, and that is a male accessory reproductive organ. Well, try to guess it. What is it? This actually is. But I want you all to guess it. What is it? This what you see here is actually this whole thing is a stromal area. And what you see here, these all cells here, these all are the glands. What you observe here, the pink color are stromal area, and this pink area is having a muscular. Remember, it has a muscular stroma. This pink color muscular stroma it responds to the testosterone, and this is a gland. And look at the gland has two layer epithelium. Now this two layer is very very important, guys. This area, this area here has a two layer epithelium. This two-layer epithelium is very very important to understand a normal histology of. Now, did you guess it? Yes, it is actually a prostate gland. So, prostate has a two-layer epithelium here, where inner layer is actually happen, having a cubital cell, and the basal area is having a. Yes, they are the basal cells. So, there is cubital cells, or is glandular cells, and there is a basal cell here. This two-layer is always normally seen in a prostate. Whenever you don't find this two-layer, something is wrong. So remember this basic rule: whenever you don't get this two-layer epithelium and the glands, something is wrong. So again, I repeat: this whole pink area, you see this pink area, these all are stromal areas, and this whole thing is a gland or acina. This gland it has a basal layer in the dark one is basal layer, and the upper area, this area is actually the glandular epithelium. So when you see these two layers, something is right, else something is wrong. Now look at this image now. What you're seeing is in the glands, you see this concreter concretions. It is called as prostatic. Concretions. Well, what are they? They actually are secretions of the prostate which have actually occluded these glands. What else you see is you can very clearly see this is the basal cell. This dark one. This dark one is a basal cell. Do this dark one. The dark blue spindle shape. The basal cells. And this epithelium here. This one is actually what? It's a glandular cell. This is how a normal prostate looks like. What is it called? It's a normal prostate. Well, prostate, if you remember, has few lobes, and the lobes are very very important to understand the normal anatomy of a prostate. What are those? They are transitional, they are central, and they are peripheral. Often a question is asked: Which among this will give rise to a benign prostate hyperplasia? So it's very difficult to get confused. Remember, a transitional zone is just around the urethra. So if this is the urethra, the transitional zone is just around it. So because it's around it, they compress the urethra, and that is what causes the problem in micturition. It causes increased frequency, urgency, and it also causes hesitancy. But if you talk about the Carcinoma, the prostate carcinoma, it actually happens in the peripheral zones, not in the central zone. It happens in the peripheral zones. Now we come to this image here. Well, first of all, the important thing to understand is: is it BPH, that means a hyperplasia, or it is a malignancy? I again tell, tell you: the moment you see a two-layered epithelium, please remember: the moment you see two-layered epithelium, this surely becomes a normal. I can repeat: the moment you see a two-layered epithelium, the basal cell. And the glandular cells, it becomes a normal. That is normal means not a malignant condition. So this is actually a benign proliferation of the prostate called as BPH. In BPH, what happens? The increased amount of testosterone, it becomes a 5-hydroxy testosterone, and because these stromal cells, this stromal, this pink area stromal, this whole thing is fibromuscular stroma. This is the fibromuscular stroma. This fibromuscular stroma actually responds to the testosterone, 5-hydroxy testosterone. And when the patient has increased amount of androgen, mostly the 5-HT. They keep on acting on the stroma, and the stroma has decreased apoptosis, and they keep on accumulating. This increased proliferation and decreased apoptosis, the entire thing combination increases the number of the huge number of increase in the glands as well as stroma. So remember, BPH is an increase in gland also, and also increase in stroma. That is what happens in a benign prostatic hyperplasia. If it is asked which lobes it involves, remember it involves the Yes, you guys correctly. It actually involves the transitional zone because of which it's just around the urethra, compressing it and causing various symptoms like increased hesitancy, urgency, and increased frequency. But if you talk about the adenocarcinoma of prostate, 
in adenocarcinoma prostate the two layered epithelium is gone and that is will cause a problem in the peripheral zone not in the transitional zone apart from that you can classify a adenocarcinoma prostate by or can grade them by call something called as gleason scoring a gleason scoring is rated from grade 1 to 5 and it looks at two types number one what is the majority of the prostate showing and number two what is the minority of the prostate showing the minority of the prostate and the minority of the prostate gland histology is given as 1 plus 2 or 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 1 and so on it is called as gleason's grading system we'll talk about this also in a separate video altogether i hope you like this video i was able to explain to you the normal anatomy histopathology and you could understand the entire thing out if you really like this video and show that you put your comments in the section below so i can put more videos to you in the upcoming days waiting for your comments god bless you all keep hustling keep studying and do the best of your abilities bye bye